Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and welcome to my Joshua Tree Cabin Renovation Project. And as you can tell, it looks quite a bit different. And that's because in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I painted the entire exterior white on modern builds. So let's be honest, my house did not look good. It's a mix of stucco with a little bit of wood siding, but it is all dirt and sand colored, but we are going to fix that. Before we get today's project started, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Tough Built. This is Tough Built's new scraper utility knife, and it might be the coolest new tool I have seen in a while. Just like everything else that Tough Built makes, this is very heavy duty and surprisingly useful. Obviously, a knife is amazing to have in your pocket, but I am not used to always having a razor scraper as well. You're gonna see this later on in the video. Even though this is a brand new release, I've had an early model for a couple of months, and I actually used it to remove the old carpets in my bedroom and then scrape the adhesive from the concrete. I'll be sure to leave links down in the description if you're interested in learning more about the Scraper Utility Knife by Tough Built, available exclusively at Lowe's. Pick one up next time you're there, or just at least try it. Even the packaging is awesome. Let's get started. My first step was to remove the old wooden shutters next to my windows. These came off really easily and just left these small holes in the stucco that we're gonna have to patch later on. After that, I used a wire brush and a paint scraper to remove any flaky paint. I found that using the paint scraper first and then following it up with the wire brush did a really good job. I didn't have to go scraping my entire house, just the eaves on the east and west facing walls. All right, so it's power wash time. Thank you, Rachel Metz, for letting me borrow the pressure washer while you are borrowing it from Benueta. Here we go. Hey! It's important that you pressure wash your house before painting or priming. That way you're sure to get a strong bond. Out here, it is very sandy and dusty, and I was able to remove a lot of crud. And while I was at it, I also used the pressure washer to clean up all of my concrete. I used Quickrete Stucco Repair that comes in a caulk tube to fill in all of those holes left from removing the shutters. While I was at it, I also filled in any cracks in my stucco. These cracks were most common along my windows, doors, and the bottom two feet of my house. And finally, I added caulk to help seal my wooden trim and siding. Check this out. Now I'm a little embarrassed to say that I have never used this masking tape and window film combo before, but it is a game changer. It makes a one man masking job way quicker and so much less of a headache. And this yellow painter's tape I'm using is Scotch Outdoor Tape. They've sponsored my last couple videos, but not today's. I just wanted to make sure and use this since all of my masking tape is gonna sit overnight and I'll be spraying tomorrow. I'm not the biggest fan of these giant Italian cypresses on either side of my house. I think I'll eventually remove them, but until then, I went ahead and masked them off so they didn't get coated with overspray. I won't say that I went overkill with my tape because everything was still there the next day. And I started the morning by unboxing and putting together my new sprayer, the Wagner Control Pro 190, which can pull directly from a five gallon bucket. This is what I'm gonna be using and testing out on the house. I'll let you know what I think. I'm very excited to try it. It's available on this stand with wheels. So I'm gonna be able to cart it around the entire property while I'm spraying. Let's do this. This is the first spray on the house. Woo! Right away, I was so excited. This paint has good coverage, so it really blocked out all of the brown behind the new paint. Ultimately, I did two coats, which you'll see, but this transformation has begun. This is amazing! As I've already said, I am not a painting expert, but I will give you a few tips to help get good results. First, try and keep your sprayer square to the substrate. That way you get an even fan and good coverage. Second, you'll wanna overlap each pass by about half. That way, everything is as uniform as possible. Third, hold your sprayer about 12 inches away from your house. Every sprayer and tip is a little bit different, so make sure and double check for the one that you're using. And my fourth airless sprayer tip is to always stop the sprayer at the end of each pass. If you keep your sprayer running continuously, you're likely to have drips and buildup on the end where it's not constantly moving. 
Oh, and if you watched my last video, the DIY plumbing and stucco repair, then you'll notice that I did not paint that. I was letting that stucco patch cure an extra day or two before I painted it. This tool you see me using is called a paint shield. You can get a good one that's made out of metal or a cardboard one for about a buck. But they are really great for getting crisp lines, especially around the bottom and the top of your house. Looking back, I also should have used this to protect the bottom of my shingles whenever I was painting the eaves of my roof line. Somehow I didn't think of this until my last wall. So just like always when it comes to these paint episodes, learn from my mistakes. Painting this wood siding wasn't much different, but it was really interesting how I had to spray from angles to get the paint into the grooves of the siding. I sprayed from a lot of different angles to get into the roof line to make sure all the joists were covered completely. At this point in time, I was still trying for one coat coverage because that's what I said it could do on the can. But that just ended up being unrealistic. Either way, for a minute, I'm gonna let this time lapse run and the music play. Enjoy. Now stucco is a little bit of a unique material when it comes to spraying because it's really heavily textured. So what I did was to apply a full coat just like I would on any other surface, but then I would come back and spray it from every angle I could think of, up and down vertically, side to side on an angle horizontally, and just randomly on a diagonal. That way the paint got into the texture and created a strong bond. And by the way, anytime you have a painting project, make sure and check out Paint Life TV. He's the person that I trust to teach me everything and I would recommend to you all. My buddy Ben Ueda from the channel The Modern Home Project inspired me to spray paint my mini split air conditioner white to match the rest of the house. He did this on his shipping container project, Flat Gray, and it looked really awesome. I've got a full installation video on this Mr. Cool mini split unit if you're interested. It's a really cool one. It's multi-zone and you can have up to four receivers on one condenser. We're almost all the way around the house. We've just got the front wall and the ceiling of the porch. I wanted to get my walls complete, so I started there. It was really cool to see how all of these cracks in the stucco completely disappeared wherever I used that quick reap stucco repair. I think this is a good time to talk about my general design scheme for this house. I know most of the time people will paint their house a primary color and then add a second color everywhere that there's trim. I think this looks fine, but it also looks very normal. But my goal for this house is to create as many design statements as possible. So instead of doing a separate trim color that's either black or gray or anything else, I'm going monochromatic and I am color blocking this entire house flat white. In a residential space, this is very uncommon, but in high end and commercial spaces, this is not that crazy of an idea. Painting all of my doors, fixtures, walls, and trim the same color is gonna create an awesome blank canvas for all of the projects that I'm gonna be building and showcasing around the exterior of this place. Right now, I know it looks like a big block of white, but just be patient with me because in the future, I'm building custom wooden shutters, doors, doing all types of landscaping and adding pops of color throughout. Unfortunately, my front porch has one of those ceilings where there are roofing nails sticking through it because whoever installed the shingles used nails that were just too long and they poked through the decking. A paint scraper with a wire brush did a pretty good job of removing any of the paint that wanted to fall away, but I didn't want to be too aggressive stripping away this paint because the majority of it did have a good bond. Unfortunately, it's not the most beautiful texture in the world, but it's a whole lot better than how it looked to begin with. First coat complete! Woo! It's safe to say I was worn out after applying this first coat of paint, but I did not want to do a whole second day of spraying, so I pressed on and I applied a second coat throughout the rest of the evening. Now this moved way faster. For one, I wasn't filming as much, which makes things take way longer. And second, I wasn't applying quite as thick of a coat, and realistically, there were some places that didn't even need a second coat. This premium Glidden exterior paint really does have good coverage. I'm sure that if I had perfect spray technique, or if I back rolled, I could have got this done in one coat. Let me know your experience with this paint down in the comments. This is Sparta! The next day, I was able to remove all of my masking tape to reveal this beautiful white house. 
I used the Tough Built Scraper Utility Knife to score along the edges of my masking tape to make sure and cut through any globs of paint. That way it peeled as clean as possible. Unmasking and unwrapping this house really was like Christmas. It was so awesome seeing all of these sharp lines revealed. And that scraper utility knife was awesome to clean up any overspray or drips that did get through the masking paper and tape onto the glass. Thanks one more time to Tough Built for sponsoring today's episode. Links are down in the description. And with that, this project is done. But before we check out these afters, let's go back to this house on day one. The exterior was outdated to say the least. It was dirt brown surrounded by sand. I guess if you wanted the house to blend in, it was doing a good job. But you all know me and I want my projects to stand out. So let's check out these afters. So what do I even say? This house used to be ugly as heck, but now it is so fresh. I know my technique is not perfect, but the end result of this paint job is amazing. It's exactly what I was hoping for going into it, and I just could not be more proud. All of a sudden, my house looks modern now, and it is only gonna get better. I really like the texture that this stucco has, and I was able to get good coverage doing two coats. And speaking of texture, it's so cool making things monochromatic because you really get to play with profiles and shadows rather than this aggressive contrast between two different colors. Out here in the Joshua Tree Desert, it gets very hot, so the white finish should be great for efficiency and cooling. And I just really hope that this inspires you all to take on a similar project. Trust me, you can do it. So seriously, thanks a ton for watching. As always, make sure and leave a like and a comment. That's really the nicest thing you can do. And make sure and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you stay updated every time I post new projects. And I'm serious, the transformation that this house took in one episode is amazing. It's something that I've wanted to do forever. I knew it was gonna make such a dramatic change, but honestly, I didn't expect it to also look so cool. I really hope you guys dig this aesthetic. A lot more is coming, so make sure and stay tuned. And we'll see you next time on Modern. This is Sparta!